I'd like to just move on to talk about technology, social media, something I know you're interested in. How is this changing the way CME is delivered? You know I like this stuff, right? Social media is fantastic. Um, social media isn't shaping CME, it is integrating comfortably with CME. Social media is simply about communications. So if we as educators, as good educators, as hashtag good educator people, um, are thinking about how do we communicate with our learners? How are we communicating with our peers? How are we communicating with patients? Social media is simply another tool that we can use to communicate. I use social media at every time point in the continuing medical education continuum. I use it in my needs assessment. So I will tweet out a question and hopefully my network will retweet it and retweet it and retweet it. And I will get answers back from the healthcare community, from the professionals, from the patients, from whomever, answering a question that I have or questions that I have on a topic or about how patients are being managed. Facebook is a fantastic place. Facebook, you have Facebook pages for hospitals, for healthcare systems, for specialty societies, for patient advocacy groups. And if people have a Facebook presence, typically they're biased towards talking and interacting and communicating. So you put a question up on a Facebook page and you know what? You get answers. You don't have to love them and they may not be what you're looking for, but you get answers. LinkedIn. I started a LinkedIn group in CME about three and a half years ago. I think at last looked, there's like 6,000 members worldwide talking about topics just about how to be good CME providers. And, and people say to me, oh God, we get so much out of it. And, and I say to them, I didn't even know you were a part of it because you don't communicate. Well, we're lurkers. You know what? That's fine. Everybody uses social media for what they need. They may be pulling, they may be pushing, but they're using it. So there, the CME community is sharing best practices. Somebody has a question, how do you do this? What does your conflict of interest form look like? How do you use the appropriate action verbs for measuring outcomes, whatever? And we talk to one another. What a great platform. So we're using it within our own professional development for ourselves, as well as using it within the context of developing and implementing good CME. At the end of a CME activity, you can create a social media platform that's closed that only the learners who participate in an education can be a part of. Then they can talk freely about how the education was able to help them change practice or wasn't able to help them change practice. And if I moderate this thing, I can ask them questions about what did they learn, what didn't work, what could we do next, and it becomes the next step in the needs assessment. So not only is it the evaluation of the last activity, but it's helping me figure out what the next activity is going to be. You talked about there looking beyond CME, but if we take that further, let's look outside pharma. Who or what inspires you for the work that you do within pharma? Well, uh, again, I, I, I'm going to take issue <laughs> with the question. I don't look at what I do as being pharma because I would do the same thing whether it was pharmaceutically supported or not. All right? But I learn from adult educational theory. I learn from uh, Amazon.com. I learn from the real world. So when I look at and I see something on a web activity, you know, uh, uh, or, or a website or a platform or Facebook, and I see the way it works, I think about how I can relate it back to what I do. The biggest mistake that, that CME professionals make is they think they have to live within the platforms that they've lived with for the last 20 years and they try to make things fit. And so when I'm looking around and I see something really cool, I say, wow, this is going to work and I'll see something and I'll send an email to the rest of my company I'll say, let's do this. Right? Something as simple as you know, I, I, adult education, problem-based learning. We really use problem-based learning in our CME and it works. And people say, wow, we've never had CME like this before. And I'm thinking, I can't believe it because PBL has been around for years. PBL has been around as long as PB&J. That would be peanut butter and jelly. So, you know, the, the, it's really important that we embrace 
these things from outside and, and I like when I bring something in and people say, wow, that's new and innovative. Where'd you learn about that? Well, it was an advert for Pop-Tarts. And, you know, that's where I got it. 